the very, I'm not going to go through all this, um, I'm trying to get out of the way here. Um, I mean, I've already sort of touched on this, but the traditional way of doing things is a pro problem solving or a deficit based model. There's something wrong, identify the problem and analyze it. Analyze possible solutions once you've found what the problem or the problems are and develop an action plan, which is the treatment. And the basic assumption of that is that an organization is potentially a problem to be solved. And if we can find the problem, we can fix them. Okay? I'm not saying that doesn't work. What I'm saying is there's another way, and I find it, I have found it a better way, uh, which is appreciative in Christ. It's a strength-based model. You've, you'll have heard that phrase before. Um, it's about valuing what, the best of what is on the assumption that, if you have a look at those assumptions on the right-hand side, on the assumption that in every society, organization, or group, something works. So even if an organization is going through difficult times, um, there will be things that work in there, guaranteed. The, the number of things will vary from organization to organization, but they'll be there. The next stage is imagining what might be. So value what we've got. Let's have a look at what we've got. Now, the discovery exercise that we did just then, and I'm putting a label on it now, the exercise you did was a, very, a snapshot of a discovery exercise that you could do with teams of, of staff, stakeholders, etc. around a theme. The theme could be as wide as let's evaluate the whole service, which is what I'm often involved in. Either, you know, let's do a self-evaluation of the organization, or it can be thematic in terms of let's just have a look at customer satisfaction. Whoever the customer is, let's focus in on that. You can, you can, you can do it around a lot of different things. So what have we got? What's the best of what we've got? What are the contributory factors to that? Let's imagine what might be. Where do we want to be in the future? So that's a, that's a familiar exercise, certainly for managers, not always for staff, but engaging, in, engaging them in that visioning exercise. And then out of that, let's dialogue and design, which essentially is let's come up with some action. Okay? And let's build that action. Let's look at what we're doing well now, and, and let's think of that as the foundation stones. This is, or another term that's used is the positive core. This is the positive core of the organization. This is what it's doing well based on people's real experiences. Not based on some expert coming in with some theoretical model, okay, and you will have the whole gamut of models from one extreme to the other, whatever you, you're trying to do. It's based on people's real experiences. If it's based on real experiences of people, what does that mean? in terms of taking people forward in, a, in an organizational development sense. It's much, Sorry? it's much easier to do if it's based on their real experience. It's easier to do because, yeah, it's a circle, isn't it? Because it's based on their own experiences. It, it's meaningful for them. So if, if you go in with some sort of exter external theoretical model about how things should be, that's your starting point. You will start to lose people, I would suggest. If you base your starting point on where people are at based on their own experiences, I suggest to you, and it's my experience, that you will engage people from the start in terms of a starting point. Look, do the visioning in terms of where people want to be, and then it's about how can we build on what we've got, what's working, in order to reach where we want to be. Um, and it, the basic assumption is that, a, that, that an organisation is potential to be discovered. There is potential in there to discover, uh, and there is a web of strengths that can be built on. There's lots of really interesting things in those assumptions that we haven't got time to discuss. Uh, I mean, the second one, what we focus on becomes our reality. It's very interesting to talk about that. You might have different views about that, but it's an, a very interesting concept to think about. Um, the act of asking questions of an organization or group influences the group in some way. Are peop some people here familiar with action research? Is that? Yeah? It's, it, there's a little bit of action research type thinking in there. Um, it's the recognition that if you go in as a researcher, for example, and you have a piece of research to do around, uh, within an organization, the questions that you ask of that organization actually start affecting the organization. So taking a very extreme view, if you went in focusing on what the problems were within that organization, that would start affecting 
typically morale as an example, but it would affect other things as well. Uh, and, and there is a view within AI that an organisation and people are drawn towards what they focus on. Um, and if you do that, you actually miss opportunity, opportunities. You miss the positive because the focus is on the negative. Has anybody here had the experience when they bought a new car, even if it was a second-hand new car, and suddenly they saw lots of other cars, the same model? Yeah, some nodding of heads. Um, does that mean that suddenly there are more models of your car around? No. They've always been there, haven't they? You just miss them. You were fo because you were focused on your new car, whatever it was, um, and that had some meaning for you, and you recognised it, suddenly you started recognising others. So, again, something interesting to think about in terms of this. We haven't got time to discuss the others, but all interesting assumptions in there that underpin um, appreciative inquiry. Um, I've, I've spoken about this mostly, so it's a f appreciative inquiry is based on a 4D model. Discovering the best of what is. Dreaming. I often, depends on the group I'm working with, I'll often use the word aspirational. Uh, I, I'll talk to, to groups about their aspirations for the futures rather than dream. Just for some people, dream is a little bit of an airy-fairy word, so I, depends on the group I'm, I'm with, but it means the same thing. What, what would you like this organisation to be? I typically... I worked with a domiciliary care organisation last year. And one of the questions in the, in the dream section was, imagine we're one year into the future and this organisation has just won an award for being the best domiciliary care organisation in Wales. What would that look like? And that's what the exercise is based around. Um, and sometimes I'll use this bit of jargon, sometimes I won't, but we come up with what we call provocative propositions they are propositions that they make about how the organisation could be that are provocative, that are stretching, based in reality, but really stretch. Um, and as I say, it's similar to sort of visioning work and, and, uh, that's done, but um, it, 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 there are some slight differences. Then there's the design phase. I was really interested... Um, the speaker this morning... Where are my glasses? Um, I mean, I like John Seddon this morning. I mean, I like anybody who says it as it is, and he's a great speaker, isn't he? I didn't quite agree with everything he was saying, I have to say, and I thought some things were generalisations, but um, one of the things he said near the end was, and, and his words, involve staff in design. Of course, I latched onto that because the third phase of appreciative inquiry is called design. If you're going to be designing a new future, involve the staff in that process. AI is a way of doing that. There is a model you can use for doing that. And the design phase is about building on, again, I'm repeating myself, but building on what you've discovered is going on already and that is working. Um, so if our theme, if we were an organ a learning organisation, we wanted to be a better, us, learning organisation, we'd have a look and we'd, we'd really dig deep into some of these. The approach of the trainers, of course, a very interesting one to dig into, isn't it? What does that mean? Um, the physical environment, the right people involved, opportunities, timing, just those. And we didn't explore, I'm sure, everything that people came up with within that very limited amount of time. What's happening there? And based on people's real experiences, what can we build on towards getting to this aspirational future? Okay. Now, the next um, and last stage is... Delivery or destiny, again, depends on what you, word you like. Um, delivery means slightly more to people. Destiny is more interesting. But, um, and it's about sustainability. The, when you come up, it's easy to come up with action plans. What's the biggest challenge when, once you've got your action plan? <laughs> yeah, it's people doing. It's doing the thing people said they were going to do because people don't, do they? Uh, and and we, I guess we've all been um, culprits at, at different times uh, of that, for lots of good reasons. So that stage of the process actually involves participants in the process of looking at um, how can we actually embed this? We've decided what we need to do, but how can we ensure that this is embedded into the future? It's sustainable. It continues on. Now, I should say to you that one of the theories of appreciative inquiry is that the very process of appreciative inquiry, because there's a massive raising of energy during this process, if you just compare this type of process to some of you who might have been inspected and, and that type of process, 
This, is, this gives the organization far more energy. And when people have energy and commitment, which again, you get commitment because they're involved in deciding on the actions. You know, if people are involved in deciding what they need to be doing, you, you generate commitment from people. So the very act of doing it um, maximizes your opportunity for sustainability. However, there is actually a process of discussing that with people as well. How are we going to make sure that these things happen? What do you think people's common criticism of appreciative inquiry is? It takes ages. It takes ages. That's an interesting one. I think the shortest amount of time you can do it is a day. Um, typically, the ideal would be four days. Very few organisations can afford four days. Um, what you can also do, I often use, is what I call a cascade. So I might do it in two days. I'll do a, a, a discovery and dream in day one with a core group of people within an organisation. Once they understand it, they go out and do interviews with other people. You cascade it out. The more they cascade it out beyond the workforce, i.e. to stakeholders and customers, the better. In other words, the bigger the reach, the, the more power the, the process has. Then they come back, either just that core group, or you invite a bigger group. You have what's called an AI summit, where you invite... I mean, you can, you can do this with hundreds of people, particularly if you use um, open space in the design phase. Uh, and, and I've successfully used open space in the design phase, which, I mean, I haven't got time to go into open space for those of you who don't know about it, but I do recommend you read about it. So that's the process. Um, any questions on that? <laughs> 